Recording in progress. Also order the regular meeting of the Riedel City Council. Roll call, please. Mayor Barnes? Here. Mayor Burton Carter? Here. Councilmember Orr? Here. Councilmember Wilson? Here. Councilmember Woodall? We um, came out of closed session with nothing to report out. No actions taken. And now can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public presentations. This is the time for persons who wish to address the council and on, on matters not on this agenda and over which the council has jurisdiction. As such, a dialogue with the council or its staff is not allowed under the Ralph M. Brown Act. Items requiring council actions that listed on this agenda may be placed on the next regular agenda for consideration if the council directs, unless a finding is made by at least two thirds of the council that the item came up after the agenda was posted and is of an urgency nature requiring immediate action. Please limit comments to a maximum of three minutes. What you got, Rich? Uh, nothing. <laughs> Any um, emails? No. Then we will close public presentations and a move to the consent calendar. Is there anyone who would like to remove an item from the consent calendar? No. Okay. Then is there a motion to accept the consent calendar? So moved. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. We vote. Motion carries five zero. Now we move on to city manager and staff updates, page 23 in our packets. City manager. Thank you, Mayor Garner, members of the council. So I just want to thank um, Derek Taylor and uh, Sunshine Kelly for getting the chlorine generator installed. Um, so still a couple of little components to put together, like the hot water heater and whatnot. But that was uh, the chlorine generator at down the wastewater treatment plant was damaged uh, during the earthquake. And it is just an, another example of, of some of the repair work that is ongoing will continue. Uh, to be ongoing. Um, also, uh, you may have noticed that uh, 70 Wildwood Avenue, uh, aka Mingo's, uh, has uh, completed their facade uh, projects, and that was also a project um, in the facade improvement project. So we had three total uh, facade uh, improvement projects uh, over the course of uh, the last two fiscal years or a uh, year and a half. And uh, that will be the final one for round one. So the next phase uh, for that is to go back through uh, the grant guidelines and come back to the council to see if we want to offer round two in a modified form or a different uh, type of, uh, uh, of system. So. Uh, the program certainly we were hoping to get more uh, properties involved and certainly there were others that never uh, took advantage of the program and, and did their own uh, enhancements on their own uh, but uh, we certainly want to look at it and if there were reasons that people were not able to participate to see if we can uh, get round two to be more applicable for for those uh, for those needs um, staff is continuing to review and monitor plans for cannabis cultivation expansion, uh, both in our business park, the Humboldt Adel Business Park, and the Dinsmore Plateau. We do have several new developments uh, that could be online by the end of 2024, uh, and these are uh, you know, pretty substantive and, and uh, interesting projects that we're very excited to be watching. Um, uh, staff will also be uh, distributing an EDM postcard through USPS uh, over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Of course, the mail will probably be very slow, uh, but we want to uh, advise residents to avoid disposing of fats, oils, or grease into the sewer system. Um, we do have uh, quite a bit of that material in the system, which uh, causes a significant problem. And then on 
uh, 20, on January 23rd, 2024, will be the homelessness point in time count uh, that annually has been occurring for about three or four years. Um, and the city staff has been uh, pretty acutely or uh, significantly involved in those point, point in time counts. Uh, but we certainly want to get uh, interested volunteers to participate in that. And it's a countywide point in time uh, count. Uh, where folks go uh, using an app on their phone, identify uh, individuals experiencing homelessness uh, all at the same time across the county. Uh, and then that gets placed into a larger uh, statistical database uh, to, to kind of gauge what's going on, uh, not just in Humboldt County, actually, but statewide. Um, so anybody interested in participating uh, in that uh, in that count, it does start a little early at 6 a.m., but if, uh, if anybody interested in participating in that, uh, feel free to contact me. Uh, with that, unless there's any other questions, I'm uh, happy to try to answer uh, questions from the council. Thank you, City Manager, and uh, thank you, too, for getting <laughs> That's awesome. Give it. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, also to Derek and Sunshine and the controls are in a better place. Yeah. So uh, the chlorine generator? Yes. Yes, we make some modifications. Like it's less dangerous now. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then thank you about the, the fast oils and greases. I, I think that is a good thing to put out there. Should we put it on the sign? We should, yeah. We should put it on the sign. Okay. All right, that's it. Thank you. Councilmember uh, Will, um, just thank everybody. A lot, there's been a lot going on, and thanks for the work. That every well, you know, I drive around a lot, and they're always out doing something. I mean, I see them all over the city, which is a good sign. I like it. So, thank you guys. Thank you. Uh, no questions for me. Councilmember Wilson? No questions. And um, I have no questions, but um, thanks to uh, you had some cones. They were very helpful. The um, <laughs> cops were driving around on Saturday and uh, saw us out there at the Christmas tree. And um, we were having some, some, some really whiz by drivers. So um, I called up. I said, you know, you guys have some cones or flags. And they brought some down. And it was really appreciated. And it really actually helped. Yeah. Because you just had that orange cone and you just kind of do like this and people kind of respond to the orange cone. So that was that was nice. I appreciated that. Yeah. And are there any emails or hands raised? Anything? Okay. Then thank you to staff for everything. And we will close that section and move on to Annual financial report for fiscal year 2022-23, page 29 in our packets. I think that's you, Travis. I think you're on. I, I'm very happy to turn this over to the manager. Good evening, Mayor Garns and members of the City Council. The annual financial report summarizes and analyzes the financial performance of the city for fiscal year 2022-2023. Details of the report describe revenues and expenditures incurred during the fiscal year and explains material differences between the values and adjusted budget. Financial reserves and fund balances are also updated in the premise of the fiscal year. This report was created using unaudited financials as of June 30th, 2023. The official audit will be finalized in early 2024. The city has three main fund types in which its finances are consolidated within. The general fund, enterprise funds consisting of sewer and water and special revenue funds. Overall, city revenues exceeded expenses by just over $44,000. This is principally due to the remainder of the city's ARPA revenues reported that yet to be expended at a sum of $400,000. This slide compares actual revenues and expenses to the budgeted amount for major funds. Revenue amongst major funds were 3.5% higher than estimated. Water and sewer recorded increased revenues in part to an increase in grant-funded sewer studies and reimbursements received from claims associated with the December 2022 earthquake. 
Total expenditures among the major funds were under budget by less than 1%. General fund expenditures were lower than budgeted by 14%, primarily due to budgeted capital projects not completed. Increases in water and sewer expenditures were attributed to both emergency and ongoing earthquake expenditures. Fund balances for the city totaled over $10.1 million out of the end of the fiscal year, a decrease of approximately 6%. The city expects total fund balances to decrease over the current fiscal year as ARPA revenues are expended and large grant projects are completed. General fund revenues were roughly 3% less than budgeted. Retail sales tax revenue were down over 30% from budgeted estimates and $125,000 year over year. This issue is not localized to just Riedel. The state of California has seen across the board decreases in sales tax revenues, due in large part to the sluggish California economy, higher than anticipated interest rates, and unwavering inflationary concerns. The city recorded higher than anticipated canvas revenues, 20% over budgeted amounts, along with reimbursements from the state and Cal OES for claims submitted for specific earthquake expenses, included in the other revenue section. City major fund revenues were 1.39 million for fiscal year 2022-23, with property taxes and vehicle license fees and retail sales tax bringing in over 471,000 and 563,000 respectively. General fund expenditures were 1.86 million or $316,000 under budget. Due to capital projects budgeted and not completed and generally lower department spending. General government department recorded expenses $82,556 over budget. This was due to the general government department absorbing a large portion of the earthquake expenses allocated to the general fund. Street revenues were more than budget by 7%, primarily due to higher actual TDA revenues received. Actual expenditures were 11% below budget due to capital projects not completed. The street funds consist of gas tax, SB run road maintenance, TDA funds and RSTP revenues and expenditures. Actual revenues for the sewer enterprise fund were 4% more than budgeted, with expenditures 14% higher than the budgeted allocation. This variance is contributed to expenses directly attributed to the earthquake, along with increased energy costs for the sewer department. The sewer fund balance decreased by $276,000, or 17% less than the estimated at the time of the 2022-23 budget development. Actual revenues for the Water Enterprise Fund were 8% more than budgeted, with expenditures 5% more than budgeted. The variance in Water Capital Fund 062 is directly related to emergency earthquake expenditures. While the water operations was mainly lower due to salary savings due to uh, lack of staffing during the first half of the year. Water fund balance has decreased by 19% more than estimated at the time of the 2022-23 budget development. Other major funds included in the special revenue fund include the building fund, the supplemental law enforcement services fund, and the CDBG fund. The building fund receives a general fund transfer annually to cover excess expenditures over revenues. The supplemental law enforcement services fund is used to supplement law enforcement services such as salary and benefit costs. The CDBG fund had a balance of $571,688. These funds are currently under contract with the County of Humboldt to offer loans to qualified applicants impacted by the 2022 earthquake disaster. A new section of the annual financial report is the financial impact of the December 2022 earthquake disaster. The city is working together with our partners at Cal OES to file claims for reimbursement related to earthquake damages in the community. The city is entitled to a 75% reimbursement for qualified expenses with the opportunity to request a 100% reimbursement on a project per project basis. 
During fiscal year 2022-23, the city incurred over $562,000 in earthquake-related expenditures, split between the general fund, 19%, sewer, 54%, and the water enterprise fund at 27%. Of these items, the city has submitted reimbursement claims for six items and have received a reimbursement for three in the amount of over $177,000. The master earthquake list provides, excuse me, the last word, the master earthquake list of projects has a cost estimate of nearly $36 million. The city's 25% cost share, if no additional reimbursements are granted, will be just under $9 million. I'd like to thank you for your time this evening. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the council may have. Thank you very much, Dennis. There's a lot of information there. Um, we'll go to council. Uh, council member Wilson. You know, on the, the sales tax difference where it was down quite a bit, is that due to, um, I think you said it, interest in these non interest rates, but what is, um, we, is that including the, we have the other major on top of that, the three quarter percent. Are we are we currently receiving that three quarters percent? It's still one percent at this point. We'll go to three quarters percent as of twenty twenty four when um, the measure is in, enacted. Uh, in January. Yeah, this has more so to do with uh, it was budgeted quite high, <clears throat> and also in addition to just the economic climate of the sales tax revenues are lower across the state in general. So Riedel is certainly um, not alone in this predicament. Um, cities and towns across the state of California are seeing decreases. The state of California itself saw a 30% reduction in their sales tax. And so this is just a factor that has, or has many factors, including inflation, not allowing the, the spending power of people in the community to spend on goods and for the city to collect those tax uh, revenues. Also, just an increase uh, in inflation, the interest rate, these are all factors that contribute just to lower spending. And uh, so that, that's a major contributing factor to it. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Orr. Oh, that actually answered my question. Probably. Thank you, Councilmember Well, um, on the earthquake impacts, when they're picking up 75 and maybe 25, and we might be able to pick up the 25 percent, how long can those trickle in? I mean, can we four years from now be getting um, refunds? Or yeah, I think so. You know, it, it, we try to take care of each list of item one at a time and close them out. So we, once we complete a project, we'll submit for reimbursement. And once the project's approved by the state, then we'll get that 75 percent return. Okay, so it could take a while. After that, the city manager has been reaching out to Cal OES and the state, uh, state stakeholders and requesting that additional 100%. Um, and so, at, you know, this time we don't know when that determination would come through and we've had meetings with Cal OES reps. They have said they don't have an answer as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard to predict, but we're going to continue to reach out and we'll continue to follow up and, and try to, you know, get every bit of reimbursement that we can because the liability to the city is, as you can see, quite large. And it'll definitely take some uh, creative thinking to continue to progress. Thank you. Thank you. I have no questions, but thank you, Travis. I always appreciate um, your budget presentations. They are easy to understand, and I'm just glad it's not me working with all those numbers. <laughs> thank you for, for doing that, and that's it. Thank you as well, and I agree with Mayor Pro Tim. I actually started out as an accounting major. No, oh, no. I'm so glad I <laughs> let it go. <laughs> we'll tell the hazardous waste. Yeah. Somehow we'll go. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. Are there any questions? Mitch, no. got anything? No, for me. Okay, any hands raised? Any emails? Mm -hmm. Then um, we will say thank you finally and move on, close that item, move on to the final item on the agenda, which is um, what we say, authorize and direct staff to remove the bear sculpture from Wildwood Avenue Media. 
<laughs> Thank you, Mayor Barnes. On uh, October 4th of 2017, uh, the city of Rio Del, Rio Del executed the Wildwood Avenue Sculpture Agreement uh, with a artist. Uh, that agreement allowed the artist a period of five years to display up to four uh, council approved sculptures for sale. And after that period of time passed uh, with unsold sculptures, uh, those sculptures would become uh, the property of the city of Rio Del. So on October 4th, 2018, the final sculpture of a bear uh, was placed on the northern end of Wildwood Avenue. So now, uh, being November of 2023, uh, over five years have now passed since the placement of the final sculpture. And per the agreement, the sculptures are now uh, the property of the city of Rio Del. And so Mayor Barnes has requested that an item be placed on the agenda to have uh, specifically the bear sculpture removed or uh, the other uh, remaining sculptures would remain in their place. Uh, at this time, there is uh, no plan for uh, replacement of uh, a sculpture in that particular location or a plan for uh, what to do with the current bear sculpture. However, uh, we will place it in the corporation yard uh, for potential future placement, potentially along the trail or other location uh, or other uh, dispensation of, of the bear. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And um, I just, that bear drives me crazy. <laughs> I, I, it's one of the few that we haven't gotten real compliments on. It's, you know, right after we asked the artist to come and shift it a little bit. So it's rear end wasn't like yeah. here, you know, real deal. <laughs> so, um, but he refused for whatever reason to, to do that. And so I, it is just my hope that we can um, remove the bear from the median and whatever happens, happens. But in this place, of course, we have a lot of trees yeah. we need to have space for. So that, that will be a, a good space there. So that was why I asked the uh, city manager to bring it to the council. So now it's up to the council. Um, uh, Council member went up. Well, I never liked it, but um, <laughs> if somebody has a real strong feeling about it, that's one thing, but I would be fine with removing it. In fact, I would be fine with removing almost all of it. So, um, council member Orr? Um, art being subjective, I'm not gonna pass judgment on it, but I think trees would be very nice there. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm okay, you know, moving it. It could be cool along the trail or something at some point. You know, it'll be repurposed. Um, but yeah, we have other stuff more um, with a different aesthetic plan for that area. So I'm, I'm okay to get rid of it. Wilson? Yeah, you, um, I keep forgetting to bring that up to put her on the agenda, which you did. Yeah. Um, along, some of the sculptures I thought were pretty nice, the smaller ones. In downtown, good. This one, it's it's really hard to even figure out what it is. And as far as the place to store it, I, uh, I know that art is an objective, uh, Mr. Orson. But my objective uh, that would be to store it. Um, Probably there's a lot more of its kind, which would be uh, more fat out is where it belongs. Or if it's bear kind. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't depict the bear, so uh, I'm perfectly pleased to say, take it out of there and store it. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any, you got anything, Rich? What is wrong with it? Yeah, what's right? What's wrong with it? Yeah, well, just, tell like me a, it looks like it just it just looks like a a conglomerate of of a scrap metal that's you know that where the other ones you can go by and see that you know the, the park the, the owl is an owl the cougars are cougars the, the buffalo you know you you can figure out that he's trying to be a he's a buffalo and he's got horns and uh, but this thing here because of the it, it just looks like a bunch of scrap metal welded together, and it, and it doesn't. You, you don't see a barrel. You see it. Really looks generic. 
Pardon me? It's not kinetic. No, it's pretty static. Yeah. It's pretty static. <laughs> well, I haven't walked up that to introduce myself. No. <laughs> no, I, I just I just think it's, it's got it's really indiscernible to me. That's again, that's a, it's an objective yeah. thing, but yeah. it's very indiscernible what it even is versus when I look at some of the other cultures I know what they are. And uh, and I think they're quite creative, the particularly the buffalo, I think. Uh, they're uh, pretty, they have pretty creative little character. That's my opinion. Yeah. Anything else? No, uh, uh, thank you. It's I'm very not. Oh, no, I need a pause. That's what you're here for. <laughs> and you can put it in your front yard. You want it? <laughs> you want it? Yeah, then I'll, we can get something. Yeah, no, remove it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it on a turf door and let's take a hold on it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, any hand raised? Any emails? We did get one. Go ahead. To the Rideau City Council, I don't understand why after the sculpture has been with us for such a long time, you would decide now to have it removed. It has become part of our main drag and a great representation of what was our local wildlife. We were once known for the salmon in our rivers and the bears on the California plate, for goodness sake. I, for one, do not want to see old Smokey leave us. Please vote to leave our bear friend where he is, breathing people as they enter Rio Dell on this little section of still wild Eel River with this long gone salmon. Thank you for giving me this time, and I hope you have you all have a great day, city. That's the only way we see it. Very, very well written. You know, just it's single one. No. No. Well, we'll just move it closer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like the old idea, actually. Yeah. So is there, um, um, do we need a motion or do we? Yeah, you, uh, you just make the staff authorize. recommend a motion to have the. Okay, have the do sculpture. we, is there a motion to authorize and direct the staff to remove this bear sculpture? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Motion carries five zero, and that brings us to set, um, council reports. Mayor Pro Tem. Okay, well, it is Christmas time. It's it's Christmas time. Um, Saturday, December second is our tree lighting. I think it's in the range of what is it, five p.m. five to seven. Um, that is a truck parade and the tree lighting, and Santa will be there, and it's a really really good time. And I highly urge people to come on out. Um, the day before that, Friday the first, is the Chamber of Commerce meeting at noon. I'll go to that, and there are five thousand Christmas events happening in the general county, but that's our Rio Del ones. Saturday, December 2nd, 5 p.m. Thank you. That's in chamber at noon on the first. Chamber at noon on December 1st. It's either there or in Nick's office, the like archaeology building there. Well, two, uh, five to seven. It's, uh, and that's the free lighting. Yeah, so I think the parade will start at five and then wait for it to be fully dark to right. Like that. And look, it is a kids event. It was really, really good last year. It was our first year since Sarah Rebach took over that building. Um, and she did a bang up job. The little kids make your own ornaments, mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. There's always treats and tea and it's, it's a fun thing. So I'll be there. All right. You better be spoiled. Thank you. What's the roar? Um, I got nothing to report. HCOG wasn't able to make it to that at parent conferences at school. Um, I'm hoping to get to the next one this month at that. All right. Thank you. Council Member Wilson? Um, I don't have any. We have HWMA and RCA, but there's nothing to report for anyone else. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Woodall? Yes. Um, I just want to read this because I never remember all of it to thank people. Um, it was in the Rio Dale Scotia Chamber of Commerce thread, and um, it said, many hands, it's about the lighting of the bridge, oh. and uh, many hands make like work. Deep thanks to the fire department, Chief Shane Wilson, and some of his crew took over decorating the bridge today, and to the West Nally family, who bring their experience, traffic control license, and sign up, signage to professionally manage the traffic on the bridge as the lights are being put up and taken down. The tree was donated by Humboldt Redwood Company and is up on the medium 
at Wildwood and the Columbus. Um, let's see. The tree lighting will be December 2nd from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Wildwood. And I just wanted to thank all those people because it was a pretty impressive project to awesome. them do that. Awesome. And what you already brought up, I drove up Wildwood on Saturday, mm -hmm. and there was Deborah and Nick in the drizzle, and it was not a short project. <laughs> and um, I want to thank you guys because that was quite something for two people to do that day. So that was it. Thank you. And, and, and have a nice Thanksgiving Fred bridge too. Oh, okay. I saw Fred out there. Who is it? Fred Breckenridge. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if we were there. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, that's Fred Breckenridge. Yeah. And he was out on the bridge as well. Oh, okay. He was the one holding the lights. Yes. They were so anyway, um, I think that's it. Thank you, everybody. Have a really, really wonderful Thanksgiving. See you in a couple of weeks on, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. We will see you in a couple of weeks on December 10th at 6 o'clock. Have a Thanksgiving.